From UFOs to psychic powers and government conspiracies, history is riddled with unexplained events. You can turn back now or learn the stuff they don't want you to know. Here are the facts. The Democratic People's Republic of Korea, often called North Korea, is one of the world's most misunderstood countries. It's also, if reports are to be believed, home to an obscene number of human rights abuses, including an estimated 200,000 citizens in labor camps, often for crimes their relatives committed. The country has been hit by bouts of famine like the arduous march of the mid-1990s when hundreds of thousands, possibly millions, of people died. The government negotiates through threats, most notably during talks over its nuclear program. The Western media often describes the DPRK as a criminal empire implicated in kidnappings, drugs, counterfeiting, and more. But if North Korea really is as bad as the media would have you think, then why haven't world governments intervened? Here's where it gets crazy. There's not a compelling reason, in their opinion, to change this situation. Despite the public accusations, it appears that no country wants to create regime change. And it's not a matter of helping the citizens in labor camps, stopping crime, or halting nuclear proliferation. Instead, it's a sensitivity toward an increasingly fragile status quo. After all, the Korean War never really ended. Although an armistice was signed, no final peace treaty exists. Today, China is the DPRK's primary benefactor, and it has cultivated a relationship with three generations of the country's rulers. Yet China does not have control over the country, only influence, and any military intervention could result in the death of millions, as the DPRK would likely follow through on its decades-old plan to attack Seoul, South Korea's capital located just across the border. According to Kurt Campbell, former Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Asian and Pacific Affairs, the U.S. goal for Korea is a non-nuclear, peacefully reunified Korean peninsula. China isn't keen on a collapsing North Korea either. A failed state at China's border would trigger a massive wave of refugees flooding the countryside. This could result in U.S. military forces creeping ever closer to China. Despite these concerns, Chinese support for the DPRK is waning as the government tires of the Kim dynasty. Another option could be regime change from within, using local forces. This is a tried-and-true CIA tactic in countries across the globe, but inciting a people's revolution could also result in a collapse of the government and, if discovered, this activity would be considered an act of war by China. The U.S. and China aren't the only players in this game, but as each seeks to be the dominant force in East Asia, the fragile status quo on North Korea is increasingly endangered. In the absence of concrete information, rumors run wild, including speculation about the role of international financial institutions. But for now, despite all the rhetoric, warmongering, and propaganda, North Korea seems safe from global intervention. Unless, of course, there's something the world's superpowers don't want you to know. North Korea. Uh, one of the street nicknames is the Hermit Kingdom. The official United Nations name is the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, or the DPRK, not to be confused with the Republic of Korea, which we all usually call South Korea. Now, you've probably heard of this place before. Uh, you've heard about the interview most recently, the film with uh, James Franco and Seth Rogen. I'm sure that you have seen on CNN, Fox, or MSNBC uh, some reports of how close North Korea is to maybe detonating a bomb, right? But you might be surprised about how little we actually know about this country. So this week, Matt and I, that's Matt behind the camera, I'm Ben, we've got Agent Scully on her lunch break, God knows what she eats. We decided to look at North Korea, at the secrets behind it, at the facts, at the fiction. And we're gonna have a brand new episode about that coming out this week. But before we do, we wanted to catch you up on several things that you might not know about this country. Number one, North Korea has a caste system. Now, I know what you're saying, that's kind of crazy because we all think of the DPRK as a communist nation. And it started that way, but uh, how many communist nations have a patrilineal line of descent based on absolute godlike rulers? 
just one, North Korea. And there's a caste system that is based upon people's position in society before what we call the Korean War, the United States. It's divided into roughly three categories. There's the loyal category, the wavering category, and then, of course, the hostile category. Now, what's surprising here is that 72% uh, of the population qualifies under wavering or hostile. So most people are under suspicion and therefore eligible for a labor camp. Which brings us to number two, labor camps. Now we've heard the stories from defectors who have made it to South Korea or to another nation that will immediately ship them back to the DPRK. And these reports, uh, whether they are propaganda or whether they're exaggerated or whether they're absolutely true, give us some unsettling news. Uh, right now, current estimates give us about 200,000 North Korean citizens in labor camps. and that doesn't really sound like uh, that much, especially if we're looking at absolute numbers. I mean, millions of people are in prison in the United States, right? However, these labor camps are not like a prison in the United States. And let's keep in mind that North Korea has a population of about 24.9 million people, just under 25 million as of 2013. So that's a significant chunk of the population. And this is where we see that class system come into play. This is also where we see a unique practice in North Korean judicial procedures, which is the idea of a three-generation punishment system. This means that a crime committed by one person, let's say your grandmother or your grandfather, is something that will be visited on, in terms of consequences, to their children and to you as a grandchild. This also works in reverse, so if you commit a crime, this could go to your parents, this could go to your grandfather. This means that people can be in these labor camps not only for crimes that they didn't commit, but for crimes of which they were never aware. Of course, international human rights groups call these crimes against humanity and ask the United Nations and other world powers why they're not doing more to stop this practice. Which brings us to number three, state-level crime. The rumors are true, uh, at least some of them. The North Korean government has committed some pretty heinous crimes, and we'll just name a couple. Uh, one, the meth trade. And I'm not talking about like street level, somebody dropped out of high school and did a little Captain Cook. No, I'm talking about Heisenberg, Walter White type, 98% pure methamphetamine. Uh, anecdotal reports, which are difficult to confirm, uh, say that it is so commonplace that it's offered to people when they show up at a house. But again, that's an anecdote. However, we do know that the meth trade is functioning at a state level in the Hermit Kingdom. We also know that counterfeiting was big business for a while. Some of you may remember the story of the so-called supernote. These were $100 US bills that were of such a high quality that one of the ways to distinguish them was that they looked better than the real thing. Now, of course, North Korea has you know, denied these allegations, but they're the only country that has denied these allegations. It's probably the nicest way to say it. And one last example, insurance fraud. Now, uh, we know that's kind of anticlimactic in comparison with uh, uh, meth dealings and with counterfeiting, and we haven't even talked about all the kidnapping that Kim Jong-il did uh, to start his dream of a North Korean movie industry, but it is true that international insurance uh, concerns, such as Lloyd's of London, found that North Korea might be trying to get over on them by blowing up some of their insured property for cold, hard cash. This fourth point is much darker than insurance fraud. It's cannibalism. And it's true that reports of cannibalism in North Korea have circulated in the international news or surfaced in news uh, occasionally for years, especially during what's known as the North Korean famine or the arduous march from about 1994 to 1998. You can read articles on these allegations uh, from the reports of defectors. There's a great article in the Washington Post by a journalist named Max Fisher uh, detailing both the practice of starvation cannibalism uh, or the practice of even occasionally selling human flesh to other people. And all of this brings us to our fifth and final point today, which is a question. 
uh, if all of this stuff is true, then why is the international community not doing more to help the people of the DPRK? China is a huge and wealthy country. Why isn't it doing anything? The United States uh, prides itself on its record of human rights, which, you know, is arguable. Why is the U.S. not doing anything? We do have an answer, though it's somewhere between depressing and terrifying. And the answer is that right now the status quo is not terrible for a lot of people. Because what happens if all of a sudden the current government ruling North Korea fell? There would be a massive human wave of refugees flooding into China, flooding into South Korea. And along with that, there would be a huge responsibility for the countries helping them. What would happen to the nuclear material the government currently possesses? What happens here is that we enter into this geopolitical cost-benefit calculation. And from the actions of the other countries adjacent to North Korea or the global superpowers of the world, apparently they said that it's best to leave it as it is for now. So you might have been hearing some construction noises while we were filming this, and if you do, that means it's time for Matt and I to go. Uh, thank you for watching this video so much. Toss us a like if you liked it, and more importantly, let us know what you think in the comments. Answer this question, what is the future of North Korea? Uh, we'd love to hear from you. You can find us on Facebook and Twitter. We can find our website, stufftheydontwantyoutoknow.com, and if you don't like the whole social media rigmarole, we get it. You can email us directly. We are conspiracy at howstuffworks.com.